Okay, thank you for joining me, Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist. Let's get on with our parenting tips. The first tip was empathy. You can look at the first session. Just there, parenting tips number one. This is parenting tips number two. That they're dealing with, um, that kind of will kind of bring the whole, um, you know, understanding together um, to see where they're coming from. But along with that, the next one is have a conversation with about uh, with them about the disrespectful behavior. In other words, don't just accept it as is. You need to talk to them about it, and either they're going to be willing to engage in a conversation with you to um, correct the behavior, to compromise, or they're not. So if I can guarantee that if my last two well, last wife and last partner engaged a conversation with their sons and really believed in me the way that they said they did. Apparently they loved me. Well, they didn't love me as much as the golden boy, the golden child, um, because they couldn't stand up for who I was. Well, guess what? So be it. If they are willing to do that, um, when you ask them, then you really need to be quiet and just listen. You need to see where they're coming from because you may learn a lot about your child by just listening. I think, I know. One thing, if the child's in denial and they're doing their micro-characteristic dark triad psychological assassination and assault tactics, emotional violence tactics, you can sure sit down and learn a lot, a lot about your child a hell of a lot and if you don't do anything about it guess what you're going to be sitting there well at least without me around <laughs> i don't care who else thinks they're going to be able to put up with it because past behavior predicts future behavior and if these children are practicing this kind of but nobody's going to get past it it's just the way it is you know, for me in the past, you know, you think you're the mom, like you have all the knowledge and you're trying to teach them and you've got the best intentions, but I think sometimes we don't listen. Um, and so keep your composure, right? When you're listening. Um, and again, you may, you may learn something. Keep your composure, right? Let your, let your young adult child pull your relationships apart, uh, run your house have you running around like their kingship but i used to be a blind fitter this is a true story as i'm sitting here this kid must have been nine year old anyway i get to this property and i'm walking around and i'm fitting the blinds and i could hear i've told this story before but i could hear this bell ring it just ding 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 and you'd see this woman scurry across the house to this room and I'm thinking, what am I, what's, okay, what's in that room? So anyway, I got to the room to fit the blind and there's this little fat kid in a robe with a bell beside his bed and there's plates and you could see all the food and drinks that he'd had. She was running to this kid when he rang the bell. I, I, on a, I, was, I sit here before you're doing this video and I'm telling you, as sure as I'm a preacher, as sure as I got five children, this kid was ringing a bell and the mother was running to this kid like a servant. I, I'll never ever forget it. Like a servant. Um, and you talk about mind-boggling. Like what's going, who, what woman's going to be able to tolerate that if that kid grows up to want women? The mother looked to me like she was grooming him for, to never, ever leave home. And now, let's say they're not willing to compromise. Um, you know... What happens when the children aren't willing to compromise in my house? They leave. I'll tell you what happens to the children in these single mother's houses when they don't compromise. The boyfriend has to leave because the little alpha infantile again micro characteristic dark triad psychological assaulting emotional um, vandalizing children get their way 
And guess what? Poor old woman goes back into her Alice out of the Brady Bunch default. Then, if they're not willing to compromise, then you are going to create these compromises yourself. You're going to create these boundaries yourself without any input from Honestly, guys and girls and parents that are watching this, it, are you going to create those boundaries yourself? I begged these women to create some boundaries begged 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 and begged i can remember guys get this right this is true 10 year old this kid was um the school was about 500 meters down the street and to be fair the little girls and that were walking to school and i said to the partner um you better stop driving him to school and picking him up like everybody else is walking what's the go here but this is how they spoil them right to make them dependent on themselves the, these mothers make their children covertly make their children dependent on them right because it gives them a sense of security that they're never going to be on their own because they've probably had some kind of trauma with men and been left on their own so they turn to the children and set it up in a way they're not going to be left on their own so i've gone i was living with this lady at the time um been there for a few years this relationship was going good actually and <laughs> i said please you've got to just give him a try this went on for a couple i said give him a try see if he can walk to school well i went off to work and i had to rush back to grab i, I can't even remember because i hardly ever go back to once i leave for work that's it i think it was a laptop or something to do a quote and I could hear this shelling and screaming, and I'll be honest with you, I not for one minute thought it was um, the mother and the child, because he was only 10 year old. He didn't seem very violent or vicious. And I walked through the door. This kid has got his mother bailed up against the wall with his hands around her throat, demanding that he drive, <laughs> her drive she drive him to school. Well, I've come through the door unbeknownst and, and, and they bolted. One went one way and one went the other way and I just said, what's going on here? Like, and I grabbed the laptop and I said, oh, for goodness sake, just driving to school. These mothers can't undo what they've done. You know how I know? He was 10. I've seen the 20, 30, 35, 40. I've worked with the 30-year-olds that still live with their mummy. Okay, they still live with their money. Mummy, 40, 45 year old, 50, 50 year old, still living with mummy because the mothers covertly um, groom these children, these young adult boys, in a way in which they're psychologically dependent on them so um, richly, so needily that it, that it, it's it's mind-boggling that it bonds them to them so in a way in which they don't think they can get on in life without their mum they always come back to their mum i've seen it with my own two eyes i've seen it dozens and i've worked with these men what are you still are you thinking to yourself are you still living at home with your mum and some of these guys are the guys down the gym that are, you know they're still mummy's boys, 40, 50, 55 years old, never left home. Good luck to you parents that are mucking your children around. That's why I'm doing this video. Wake up to yourselves. If you've got to get boundaries in place, put the boundaries in place. If these children need to have got you to the point where they need to be kicked out, kick them out. Stop losing the life that you're trying to create for yourself stop it they will rob you of your life you'll be out you'll be gone and they'll still be barred assing around um dependent on people instead of being independent and growing themselves it's incredible it's not the children it's the parents from them so they've been given an opportunity to voice their um thoughts to voice their feelings um and you've given them the, the, a safe opportunity to listen and to be quiet and listen to them. And if they're still not willing to do that, then you're the one making the, the boundaries, right? Boundaries are get out. 
All right, okay. Let's go back to this this morning. Okay, why are you late? Nothing, not a word, right? The other son was there. Why are you late? Nothing, not a word. And I start screaming. I'm screaming. I've had enough. You've been shown for the last five years to be half an hour early, not five minutes late, and you waltz down here like it's some kind of a joke. It's so disrespectful. Don't meander to these people. He, he lost his day at work. How are you going to teach these people responsibility if you're meandering around them and letting them get away with, with irresponsibility and disrespect? I've seen these mothers, right? I've seen these single mothers piss their relationships down the drain to meander to these infantile monsters. Monsters. And they wonder why their relationships don't work. You're coming into these relationships, right? Just to have it. I used to say, I've just come down here to see you. I'm not into all this garbage. And they do nothing. I used to say to her, you've done absolutely nothing. Oh, yeah, they're doing something all right. They're in damage control, making sure the relationship between the child and the mother's not going nowhere. They don't care about the bloke. Be aware of this, guys. You're not as important as you think. Let them drown in their um, dysfunction, man, in their evil, in their micro-characteristic dark triad domestic formations. Um, so now to follow through with those, you need to... Um, that's the hardest part is following through sometimes. Okay, is she staggering or not? She's staggering, right? She's staggering. That's a sign of weakness. You don't stagger, right? My children know you mess with me past the boundaries that I've given you and you are out. You're out the gate. Get your stuff, get your shit and get out and learn how to grow up. And the women know it too. And you know what? It, 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 just, it just works. Somehow or other, it makes these people go away and think and somewhere along the line, they say, thank you. You know, my second wife sent a text message after all the destruction that they caused these children. And it said, dear Jason, I am so, so sorry for the trouble and the loss that myself and my children have caused you. Did it fix anything? Nah. But she realized, and she tried to come back, but I wouldn't have her back. And you're the one making the, the boundaries, right? Um, so now to follow through with those, you need to, um, that's the hardest part is following through sometimes because you think, oh, it's easy putting it on paper and I've presented it to them, but now following through. But that's a crucial part um, because the. She's petrified to say it, but at some point you've got to kick them out. It's as simple as that. If they're not going to behave, get out. And you can tell she's staggered there. She doesn't know really what to say. Sometimes you've got to kick them out. It's a simple, get out. It's as simple as that. No privileges, no nothing. Get out and learn what it's like to live in the world as a decent person. And you know what? I've had to say this to women. Get out of my life. You're acting like a, 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 you're for the streets. You know? They, they, they act like they're in affairs with their children. They're adult children. It's, it's crazy what, how they'll just let these children destroy their lives. The consequences to them not following through with something is how they're going to learn. So the rules will get broken, the boundaries will be tested, but you have to have the will to enforce the consequences. And Guys, ladies and gentlemen, and unfortunately most of these parents have not got the will. And you can tell by her hesitation that she still hasn't either. And then you do that, you do your part, and then it's up to them how they react to it. And that's not on you as a mom, as a parent. But it will be on you if you're kicking them out the door, right? Or you just let them slough and slumber around in their micro-characteristic dark triad forms of behavior 
while you try and work out what you're going to do next. You've got to put fear in them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Most of the addicts that I know that come off drugs, this is just another example, had some kind of shock experience or life-threatening experience that caused them to go, I'm not doing any of this anymore. A lot of them got pregnant and have gone, I'm not doing this anymore. You, you, they're, they're, too, they're just too weak. They're spineless parents. Um, you know, sometimes I think we need to face that you and your child may not have the same, um, like compa combat combatible personalities. Um, combative personalities. Um, of course not. You, you're dealing with rebels and, and, and trouble and people that see a lot of these parents cost these children their lives because they're not scared of anything. They're not being shown that these boundaries are real and not to be crossed. You may be two different people that just need a break from each other, and that's okay. Um, depending on you know if you're living in the same home and all, of, there's lots of different um, things that come into play. Living in the same home and these children are just taken over. Kick them out. Kick them out. It's not on you, she said. It's not on you. But that's something to keep, uh, keep in mind, to honor each other's space and maybe take a break if needed. Um, but lastly, you know... Honor each other's space. You've got to be kidding. I've been with these single mums, these adult children come barging through the doors. You could be having... In some cases, I was having sex with these mothers. They'll come barging through the door... They'll come knocking on the door, screaming out for food. They'll say they've got a headache. Um, oh, I've seen a thousand. Mum, can you get me whatever? Uh, and, and there's no respect. These women have no respect from their children whatsoever. And yet they idolise them. They pedestalise them. They grandise them. They let them run the house. Well, this person's going to work to supply their financial needs, their alcohol, their drugs, um, their, their medications and their food. And it, oh, no. Oh, no. The mother's like the, um, the Salvation Army, as it were, in a domestic form. They supply everything for them. They... they um, prop up their, their habits and their, their addictions and they prop up their emotional weaknesses. and I've seen it all. I really have. I've seen these mothers literally all but have sex with these adult children. I'm sorry. I have to be honest. It's all but. They're psychologically groomed each other. It's sickening to watch. It's, uh, I'm sorry, but this is just how it is, God. I'm so sorry to, to tell you how horrible it is, but it really is. You know, really, I think seeking a counselor, seeking a coach that can help you with this. And that's, honestly, that's what I do. So that is, you know, being able to create that boundaries plan, talk about the enablement, what are your triggers, all of the things, um, that us moms need help with because we so desperately think that we have it all figured out. Word chastisement, correction, um, discipline. Boundaries is just not enough. There's chastisement, discipline, correction, there's punishment. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, come on. But yet at the same time, it's destroying us as, as our own being um sure is darling it's destroying you mothers all right because guess what your boyfriends are going off with someone else you're wearing them out because of your dysfunctional children you're trying to have a relationship and they're just going i'm sorry i've seen you know life better than this i'm not putting her up with your spineless um weaknesses with your children running your place and and destroying things no Oh, no, that's not going to happen. And they let it happen time and time and time again. And they end up with nothing. Their life passes them by and they end up with nothing. 
If you don't believe me, have a look around you if you're listening to this. What have you really got that your children um, has supplied to you? No, honestly. Hopefully I'm wrong, but I think for the majority I'm right. So I hope that helps. Um, there's a lot of factors that come into play, different scenarios and so forth, but that is really crucial as far as giving, letting your child have a voice, listening to them, ask them to participate, and if they want to, super. Then let them have some say in the boundary. So let them have a say. And whether your partner's coming over or not, um, I've, been, I've been involved in these families and, I, and these children, right, these rebels, dark triad characteristic, um, micro characteristic dark triad children, right? They'll have everybody going to the birthday party except the mother's boyfriend. And the mother does nothing. Can you see how unattractive that makes that woman look? I mean, some of you women that are earshot in this, coming in by stealth, you don't think I know you're there? You need to stop and have a real close look at what you've done to yourself and to your children. Really, stop and have a look. It is just destructive. It is just embarrassing and it's completely unacceptable. But because it's all behind closed doors, you think you can get away with it. You're not. You're destroying, you're destroying people's lives. Say in their curfew. Um, as long as it's not completely unrealistic, let them have that say. Um, it's going to empower them as well. And I think sometimes too many parents are more concerned about empowering themselves. And this isn't. This is what I mean. This, I'm, I, I, I've got a headache. This is what I mean. You, it's your house. A lot of these children don't even pay rent. They just kid themselves. Honestly, guys, if it's if it's out of order, bring in the spare the rod, spoil the child. You don't have to hit them. Just kick them out. Tell them to work themselves out. Give them a shock. Give them a fright, and let them grow up. For goodness sake, there's too much rescuing going on. This is Reverend Dr. Jason W. Morrison, theologist. Thank you for joining me. Bye for now.